All right, praise the Lord. Welcome to Abundant Grace Church. Just up on your feet this evening and uh, to hear from God, uh, bringing Him the sacrifice of praise. Amen. Welcome those who are watching us online. Good to see the people here in the building. Uh, if you're watching us online, set this time aside, grab your Bible, worship with us as we uh, sing a couple songs here and get into the Word uh, and give you a good power packed little pep talk. Amen. We all need that. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your, for your grace, for your mercy on our life. Father, you're good to us. You're faithful. We call you faithful. We don't judge you faithful based on our circumstances. We know you're faithful to see us through all the way to the end. And we thank you for it. Be glorified in our midst this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. of the blind, there's no one like you, none like you, into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you, our God is greater God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, you're awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, and our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, you're awesome in power, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you Oh, there's none like you None like you Our God is greater And our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer He's awesome in power Our God Tell them again, our God, God, you are greater, God, you are stronger, God, you are higher than any other, you are my healer, you're awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, then what could stand again, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? Hallelujah, nothing, amen. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. And our God is stronger. And God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. You're awesome in power, our God. Tell him one more time. Stir yourself up. Our God is greater, and our God is stronger, and God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, you're awesome in power, our God, our God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We thank you for being who you are. You're the healer, you're the provider. There's none like you, Lord. Hallelujah. serve a good God, a big God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes we just have to, uh, life could, life could get unfair and life could be unkind and cruel and so can people and so could circumstances. But I have found that in the midst of the, the, the fiery trials, if we'll lift our hands towards heaven and by faith, just begin to worship him, there's a supernatural peace that comes on you that you just can't experience anywhere else. And, uh, 
And, and you know, well, we're going to get into some things tonight, but praise God. So let's just worship him. Lift your hands towards heaven. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how thankful you are for his grace on our life. Father, we humble ourselves before you under your mighty hand. And in due season, you will exalt us, Father. We thank you that your hand is upon us. Your favor is upon us. The favor to prosper, the favor to be in health, the favor to have joy and peace in our lives and in our families. We thank you for it. You are good to us. Amen. Lord, I want to know you. Lord, I want to know you. In my heart there is a fire. Every morning when I wake up, it's you. That I desire just to feel your heart beat what I long for. Oh Lord, I want to know you more. Tell them, Lord, Lord, I want to know you. In my heart, there is a fire every morning. What I long for, oh Lord, I want to know you more. Tell them, Lord, I want to know you. Lord, I want to know you. In my heart there is a fire. Every morning when I wake up, it's you that I desire. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Don't you love the Lord? He is so good. He's our everything. If I had the rest of the band, I would do that song, <laughs> but I'll wear myself out by my... <laughs> Be, uh, well, yeah, definitely next time, for sure. I'll get with you on that, because if we had everyone... I definitely want to hear that, though. Got a, what, uh, alto sax? Wow, 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 awesome. It's a worship song called Amazing Love. Are you thankful for God's amazing love? Hallelujah. You know, the Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, uh, and, and sometimes we use that term sinner, but while we, while we yet had no interest in him, because we were busy doing our own thing, pursuing our own thing, he sent Jesus to that cross for us for us and it's because of his amazing love unconditional love that we are who we are today and it's the goodness of God that makes a person want to change their ways and come to him he's so faithful father we love you I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted were condemned I'm alive and well the spirit lives within me because you died and rose again let's sing that again I'm forgiven I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted 
accepted You were condemned Well, I'm alive and well Your spirit lives within me Because you died and rose again Oh, what an amazing love Amazing love Tell me how can it be That you, my King, would die for me Oh, we worship you, Lord Amazing love Now I know it's true It's my joy to honor you In all I do I honor you Oh, honor the King Amazing love Amazing love Tell me how can it be My King would die for me. Oh, amazing love. Now I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Tell them in all I do. In all I do, I honor you. You are my king. You are my king. Oh, yes, you are, Lord, you. Father, you be magnified. Bring glory to yourself, Father. You are the King of kings. You're my King. You're my Lord. You're my very own Father. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for sparing me and keeping each and every one of us for this moment in time. Thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon us. We value what's important to you, Father. We honor you truly from our hearts, and we say, be glorified tonight. Father, speak to us. Show us your ways. Show us your heart. We hunger and thirst for you. And you said if we would, that we would be filled. We thank you for overflowing revelation, knowledge, impartations of truth. To you be all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Glory to God. Ah, the Spirit of the Lord is here in this place. Glory to God. Well, welcome to the church this evening. Glad you're with us. And we have guests here with us. Honor for you to be here with us, worshiping with us. Praise God. Uh, we're going to receive our, our tithes and offerings. Uh, we worship the Lord with our song, and uh, um, giving and sowing is just as much part of worship. And, uh, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here because you guys know all about that. Amen. And, 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 and God honors our obedience. Amen. He does. 
And uh, so this is part of our worship. Uh, how many are thankful for the provision that God has provided for us in our lives? It's supernatural provision. Things might be seem a little tough right now, but we keep our eye on our answer. We keep our eye on him. And in, in due season, the harvest is coming in. Amen. Glory to God. We believe that. God is keeping us, and his word says it. He said that I will meet all of your needs, your wants, and your desires according to my riches and glory. Amen. So when the enemy comes with some lie, you forbid him. You tell him, no, get your hands off my stuff. God is my provider. He's my source. Amen. And, uh, and, and God honors obedience, guys. He said, bring your tithes into the storehouse, tithes and offerings. And he said, prove me this day that uh, I would not... Open up the windows of heaven, pour blessings into your life that you wouldn't have room enough to contain it. And we are expecting those kind of things in our lives. We're thankful for what we do have, but the best is yet to come. <laughs> we haven't seen anything yet. Glory to God. Glory to God. So uh, if you have your offering ready, uh, let's just stand up and hold it up to the Lord and thank him that he's the one who provides seed for the sower, right? He's the one who meets every one of our needs. He's our unlimited source. Unlimited, unlimited. Amen. And we believe you, Father. We thank you that you do provide for us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Father, every debt is reduced and eliminated, every bill paid in full. We have surplus, Father, full barns so that we can do and bless as you direct us to do. Father, the work of the ministry, establishing your, your, your covenant, your kingdom in this day to be the lighthouse that you desire for us to be. We thank you as we sow in faith and obedience today that you are opening up the windows of heaven and you're providing for us spirit, soul, and body. We thank you for it and count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing love Tell me how can it be that you, my king would die for me Amazing love is good. He's so good. <clears throat> Praise God. I was just thinking about this, that if for nothing else, we have reason to run around this place right now, and I want to tell you the reason why, because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. If for nothing else, that is the best news ever. We are residents of the kingdom of God. And when we leave this temporary place that we're at right now, we get to enjoy the most amazing time for eternity. Not for 60, 70, 80, 90 years. Forever, forever. And you know what? That, to me, is reason to stir ourselves up. Glory to God. The Lord is good. Amen. If you have your Bible, this, this I'm going to say this morning, I'm always ministering in the morning, um, uh, open up to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, we're not going to be long tonight, I'm going to give you some word and encourage you, and I believe this is uh, something that's stirring in my heart. Brother Frank has been ministering on the armor of God. And, uh, and I know last week, you know, he went over the, the, uh, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and I believe he ended with our feet being shod with the preparation, the boots of the gospel of peace. And he's been going into some of those things. And uh, so what we're going to talk about tonight is not necessarily each piece of armor. I'm not going to let him continue teaching on that, but being a soldier, being a soldier, and, uh, you know, Paul, the Christian walk, the Christian journey, um, Paul likens it unto three different things. He likens it unto a farmer, and farmers are hardworking. You know, they're up when everyone else is sleeping, and they're out there when everyone goes back to bed. <laughs> they're still working, right? Uh, then he likens them unto an athlete, 
right, who train and prepare. And the, the Colosseum back in those days was not for the faint of heart. I mean, when they wrestled, it wasn't the wrestling that we know of today. It wasn't WWF. You fought till you died. And so everybody obviously wanted to win <laughs> because otherwise we were being carried out of there. So, uh, so and, and the training that goes into it. And then he also likens it unto a soldier. And, uh, and so, you know, in just impressed in my own heart, um, hearing from the Lord about things and hearing from people in the church and even in my own life, uh, I, don't, I don't like to magnify or give the enemy any more airtime than he needs. Okay, so we're not going to talk about, oh, we don't speak those kind of things. Oh, the devil's all over me. Well, get on top of him. He's under your foot, right? Exercise your authority. Not denying that, not denying those things, because he'll try, but he'll take advantage of the person that magnifies him. If we'll start to magnify God and look our problem in the eye and speak to it like Jesus said, say to your mountain or say to your problem, Get out of the way. Believe it in your heart. Don't doubt it. You'll have whatsoever you say. And this morning in our faith and healing class, we, we, uh, we were talking a lot about the power of our words, speaking. Speaking, and I really believe that we'll get a revelation of, uh, of how powerful and how significant our words are. We would keep a guard over our mouth, and what we would say would agree with what God says. If we want, if we want what God's promises are in our life, we have to agree with him. We have to say what he says. It is counterproductive to say, I believe I'm healed, and then when someone asks you how you're doing, you say, oh, man, I feel like I'm dying. That's counterproductive. I'm not saying you may not feel like. You may really feel like you're dying. But do you want to die? So then don't say it. Now, people say, oh, that's, what do you think, that's hocus pocus? No, there's power in our words. Jesus spoke about this all through, it's all through the will of God. It's all through the word about speaking, speaking, speaking. And, uh, and so um, when we build ourselves up and we agree with God, when we're going through things, then we invite the power of God into our situation to work on our behalf. But we, you know, I had the Lord say this, and I shared this, I think it was on Sunday. You know, believe in the Lord for certain things. God has given us authority. He's given us access and the privilege to use the name of Jesus. And there is miracle working power in the name of Jesus. It, uh, uh, give life to the dead, that kind of power. Give sight to the blind, that kind of power. And, uh, and too many, and I had the Spirit of the Lord say to me, you know, you're thanking me because of an answered prayer, but you're thanking me as if you had to beg me to do it. He said, I already did it. You need to exercise your authority and forbid some things to happen. And, and, you, and, and then I, I, you're not responsible for the result. He is. But he can't do anything if we're begging and pleading. We are to use our words and speak to the mountain, whatever that mountain may be. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, um, in, in preparing for this, I didn't know I was ministering tonight till you know, sometime this morning, um, but, uh, but this has been stirring in my heart anyway. And, uh, you know, when you're in the Word all the time, you don't have to study for a message. There's always something there, right? For all of us, we, we should all just be full of the Word. And so... Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, this is the Amplified I'm going to read from because I like the way it really breaks this down. And uh, Timothy, uh, Paul is encouraging Timothy. Let me give you a little history. Would anyone like to know a little bit of the history that's going on here? 1 Timothy, the first letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, the church was exploding. Things were happening. They were adding to the church. Everybody was Timothy's best friend. They loved the church. Miracles were happening. All good things were happening. And Timothy was a young pastor. Paul was encouraging him. Um, and then five years goes by, and Paul writes another letter, which is 2 Timothy. And now at this point, persecution, like we've never known in our lives, has, has crept into the church. 
Uh, Nero, the emperor at the time, burned down Rome and blamed the Christians for doing it. So everybody turned against the church. I mean, to a degree that, that, that we have never experienced and, and pray that we don't. But people were leaving Paul by the truck loads, by the chariot load, I should say. They were defecting from the church, departing from the faith because they were being challenged. If you're a Christian and you're part of Timothy's church, we're going to crucify you. We're going to burn you at the stake. They were building the road. Do you remember? And you know what they were doing with the Christians? Using them as torches so that they could work through the night. P persecution. This is five years after 1 Timothy. So 2 Timothy starts off. Now, Timothy is a young pastor, must have been under immense pressure, uh, all sorts of emotions and feelings. What is happening? That You know, I'm, I'm, I'm by myself now. Everyone has departed the faith, and they want to kill us. And, and so this is what he's dealing with. Now, Paul writes him this letter, and this is where, this is where I wanted to give you that little bit of history leading up to this right here. So chapter 2, the beginning of the chapter, it says, So you, my son, and, 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 and uh, Paul considered Timothy his, his son in the faith, right? So you, my son, be strong, constantly strengthened. Constantly strengthened. Do you hear this? This is not a casual Sunday Christian walk. This is a every day. Be strong, constantly strengthened, and empowered in the grace that is to be found only in Christ Jesus. The things, the doctrines, the precepts, the admonitions, the sum of my ministry, which you have heard me teach in the presence of many witness, entrust as a treasure to reliable and faithful men who will also be capable and qualified to teach others. So can you see what Paul's admonition is to Timothy right now? Everybody that was pastor, Timothy, we're with you. And then when the going got tough, they were nowhere to be found. So he's saying, don't shrink back. Hold on to these things that you've seen in my ministry. And there are going to be some faithful men that are going to stick with the truth and stay with you and trust this to them so that they can continue. Aren't you so glad? Listen, we are recipients of that, that strength and that encouragement. Because had Paul given up, had Timothy defected, who knows what would have happened? Here we are reading what the Spirit of God uh, spoke to Timothy through Paul. All these millennia later. So he said, uh, entrust this to faithful people who will be able to and qualified to teach others. Verse 3, take with me your share of hardship. Take with me your share of hardship. Passing through the difficulties which you are called to endure. We're called to endure. Like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. So let me read that to you from the, from the uh, King James, um, because I like the way it says it there, and then we'll, then we'll come back to the Amplified. He says, so, so he's telling him, he's encouraging him, Paul, T Timothy, don't shrink back now. Keep with the faith. He says, thou therefore, Timothy, endure hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Good soldiers are ones that stick it out. They're not fair weather. They're there when it's, when it's tough and when it's, great and when it's glorious. They're in it for the long haul. And in, in um, meditating on these things, um, we are not magnifying the hardships. We're magnifying the God of grace that will sustain us during the hardship. If we'll stand up like a soldier, put our, our armor on, and, and speak to the enemy and not let him run roughshod through our lives, through our family. Uh, he wants to, the Bible says that he roams around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we have to give him permission. And we should get up every day, remind him, you may not devour me because greater it is written, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And no weapon formed against me will ever be successful or ever prosper. 
ever. And it may look like it is, but God is working things out for our good. And if we'll hold fast to our confession of faith, we will come through this shining brighter than before we started. Every time, every time. This isn't wishful thinking. This isn't a, a, uh, a motivational kind of speech. This is the living words of God. This is how God operates. This is how Jesus operated on the earth. And this all takes, going back to our, what we've been studying, humility. Humility, which is trusting God. Trusting God when everything seems like it's not working, we could confidently and boldly say, it is working. It is working out for my good. It is working out for my good. So endure hardness. Endure hardness. What is hardness? Hardness is problems. <laughs> hardness is difficulties. Hardness is health issues, financial issues, conflict, depression, uh, marital problems, relationship problems, job problems. Those are hardships. Those are hardships. But Paul is telling Timothy, you need to endure. And you know what that means? I was talking to my mother about this. I said, it simply means we need to outlast the problem. Amen. Outlast the problem. Right? Like the, the Energizer bunny. We'll just keep on going. You know, like the old weeble wobble. They get knocked down, but they bounce right back up again. You know, Paul said it himself. We are perplexed, hard-pressed on every side, but not knocked out of the race. You know, hardships. But you know what? He knew that he was more than a conqueror. And that's what he kept his eye on the problem. So we're not magnifying our problems at all. In fact, our problems are lies that need to be put under our feet. And when we speak God's word over, and again, this isn't mind over matter. Uh, we don't call things that are as though they aren't. We call things that aren't yet as though they are. That's faith. That's faith. And so if you're not feeling well and someone asks how you're doing, you say, I'm fine. And you know what? You're telling the truth. Because God's word says you're healed. You've been delivered. You've been delivered. I'm prosperous. I walk around saying that all the time. I am so prosperous, I could buy the whole block dinner if I want. And, and soon, very soon, I'll have a barbecue and everybody can eat chuck eye, <laughs> steak, whatever it is. So anyway, therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, no man that warreth... Well, let me get out of the King James now because then it's going to get well, uh, back to the Amplified. No soldier in active service, an active service military personnel gets entangled in the ordinary business affairs of civilian life. Do you hear that? Are we enlisted? We are. We're enlisted. We're, where are we enlisted? In the army of the living God. We are soldiers in his army. Soldiers of, of uh, th that love the brethren the way Christ loves the church. Those kind of soldiers. Doing war against the enemy, not against each other. Not against each other. War against our, en our enemy, the adversary, who would want us to think that the adversary is our brother and sister when it is not. It's that spirit of strife that he's behind. So... That's what soldiers do. But we don't get involved in ordinary business, civilian life. He avoids them so that he may please the one who enlisted him to serve. You know, in the, in, in the military, when you're enlisted in your active duty, you don't just get to leave and say, I want to go home. Because you could try that. And it's a thing called AWOL. And that's called absent without leave. And when they catch you, you're going to wish you never went AWOL. You are there enlisted in their as service to them. You, they call it a GI. You know what GI means? Government issue. You are a government issue. And so they control where you go, where you sleep, where you live, even what you eat. Right? They control your vacation schedule, where, where you're going. So, but uh, the point is, they, they, they don't get to go home. Now, why do you think they don't let them go home? Think about this for a minute. Why? Why won't they let them go home? Don't you know that this wasn't some mad, crazy guy who came up with all this kind of training? They realized that in order to get a soldier to be a valiant, 
enduring soldier, they have to strip him of what he once was and reinstill in him this new fighting machine that will endure hardness. Now, if they go home every weekend and get used to the comforts and the laziness and the not having to wait for anything, then they become soft. They become an easy target, right? And then the temptation is, eh, I don't really like that army thing. This is much better here for now, <laughs> for now. So they, that's why they don't. They, 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 they're active deployment. They get leave, but then they got to report back. They got to report back. So, and it's so that we can please the one who enlisted him to serve. We've been enlisted in the army of God. I just got done saying our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Glory to God. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. And we're here to serve him in his interest. But he's a good commander. He's so gracious and patient and caring and humble and kind. And if anyone competes, and then he goes into as an athlete, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. And then he goes in the hard work and farmer who labors to produce crops, ought to be the first to receive his share of the crops. Think over the things I'm saying to, to Timothy. Grasp their application, for the Lord will grant you insight and understanding in everything, in everything. Now, I want us to uh, look at, for a moment here, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and then from here, I want us to, because I was reminded... Of the story of uh, a couple valiant, hard, enduring soldiers in the Old Testament. And we're going to look at them for a minute. But I want us to look at this here. Um, verse 13 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And the reason I'm reading this is because when we look at numbers here in just a moment, you'll see what I'm talking about, about the story of Joshua and Caleb. Okay? And... Uh, Verse 13 says, yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had wrote in Scripture. I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we also speak. What's the same spirit of faith? Same spirit of faith as who? God. We have the God kind of faith. When, when, when Jesus cursed the fig tree... And then the next day, when they came walking by it again, the disciples were like, hey, that tree that he cursed, when, when he cursed it initially, nothing happened. They didn't see anything happen anyway. Just like you might not see anything happening right now, but there's something happening. It's happening in a realm that we can't see, but by faith, we see it. And, and so Jesus demonstrated this for us for right now, for what we might be dealing with. He used that illustration as a faith uh, lesson Cursed that fig tree. Nothing happened immediately that they can see. But when they came by the next day or whatever it was, the next evening, they noticed that the tree had withered up. And they, were, they said, Master, look, the tree that you cursed had withered up. And Jesus knew they were going to ask him this. <laughs> and he didn't go, wow, thank you, Lord. You actually, thank you, God. You, you, you did that. You know what he said to him? Have the God kind of faith. That's what he said to him. Have the God kind of faith. And then he said, whosoever, that qualifies every one of us sitting here, whosoever shall say unto their problem, whatever the problem may be, if it's finances, speak to the financial problem. If it's your, your marriage, if it's your children, if it's your health, speak to it. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, mountain, get out of the way. Be cast into the sea. I'm, and, Father, I'm not doubting it in, in, at all, but I believe in my heart that that which I'm saying is going to come to pass. He said, you shall have whatsoever you say, not whatsoever you beg and plead from God to do. Because God has already, now the ball's in our court, he's made the provision for us. We have to now endure hardness as good soldiers, as good soldiers. So this scripture have the same, we have the same spirit of faith. The same spirit of faith. The same power that rose Christ from the dead dwells inside of us. Inside of us. How does that power get activated? By what we say. It can lie dormant or it can be 
full power in demonstration by what we say, by speaking to it, by speaking to it. And the enemy will do his best to discourage us, to get us to say the wrong thing, to get us to doubt, to get us to waver, to get us to all those kind of things, to question, to get bitter, to get angry, to get depressed. No, nope, no, nope. we look him right in the eye and we say, you're a loser, you're a liar, and you're under my feet. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a winner. I'm a winner because Jesus Christ died for me, and now he lives on the inside of me. And he's making intercession for me. He's praying that our faith not fail, according to the scriptures. Uh, in John, let me read this to you, and then I'm going to look at numbers, and then we're going to uh, close up because I could preach all night. You know that. I uh, know you could. Um, so... Let's see, I think this is what I, what I want to. Uh... Oh, I want to, uh, John 16, 32, and we'll read through the end of the chapter here in verse 33. He says, Jesus is speaking to the disciples here. He said, take careful notice. An hour is coming and has arrived when you will all be scattered. Now, they didn't understand what he was saying. They didn't. He was speaking prophetically of what he knew was going to happen. They didn't kind of understand. When you will all be scattered, each to his own home, leaving me alone. And yet, I am not alone because the Father is with me. Friend, you are never alone. I don't care how dark it looks. You are never alone. Ever alone. Because God is with you. Always. And those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Glory to God. He said, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. Have perfect peace in him. And then he said, in the world, you have tribulation, distress, and suffering in this world. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy, I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. Glory be to God. There is nothing that we will encounter in this life, no difficulty, no problem, no mountain too high, no, no valley too wide, that we won't get victory over if we'll, if we'll stay with God on his side. Now I want to close with uh, numbers. Let's look at this real quick, and I want to just, because this... This stirs me up. Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 through 10. And this is the ERV, the easy uh, read version here. I, I like the way it says it here. Numbers 14, 6 through 10. In keeping with the same theme here, enduring hardness as good soldiers, and that's what we are. We're, we're able to do it. God uh, would never place us and put us in a spot where we didn't have the necessary tools that we need to succeed. His grace is sufficient for us. Um, so numbers, and again, this is the story of uh, Moses sending out the spies, the 12 spies to go spy out Canaan land. And, uh, and so 10 of them came back with an evil report, right? And uh, you remember that? They said, oh, we were like grasshoppers in our sight. I mean, yeah, the place is awesome. It's great. The fruit's amazing. Everything is great. But there's giants in there. And uh, they're going to squash us, Moses. We can't do this. That's a big problem. And uh, Joshua and Caleb became very upset when they heard them speaking this doubt and unbelief. Same spirit of faith. Now, what was it about these guys that they, they were in the same place, and yet they saw it differently? They saw it the way God saw it. They chose that if God said we can have it, then we're going to go get it. That's what they believed. That's what they believed. So Joshua and Caleb became very upset. Joshua, the son of Nun, N-U-N, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, were two of the men who explored the land. These two men said to all the Israelites gathered there, the land that we saw is very good. It is a land filled with many good things. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, and he will give that land to us. Do you, what do you hear out of that 
that, that, that speech that they're giving. You hear boldness, you hear confidence, and you see faith. That's what you see. And what is it based on? Some wish that they, it's based on because they heard from God. Moses heard from the Lord and said, you're going into the promised land. So they believed, the, do we have a promise, guys? Have we heard from the Lord? Our believing has to be based on what he said. People believe they're going to die based on something that was said. If you listen to the experts, you'll plan your funeral. Right? Because we've dealt with this before, and there's just no cure for it. To them, there's no cure. But to God and to the one who believes, all things are possible. All things are possible. Nothing shall be impossible to those who believe. If the Lord, he will lead us, he will give that land to us. So don't turn against the Lord, is what they're saying to them. Don't be afraid of the people in that land. We can defeat them. They have no protection, nothing to keep them safe. But we have, but we have the don't be afraid of the people in that land. Wait a minute, what? Hang on here. What? We can defeat them. They have no protection, nothing to keep them safe. Don't, don't be afraid of the people in that land, uh, but we have the Lord with us. So don't be afraid. All the people began talking about killing Joshua and Caleb with stones, but the glory of the Lord appeared over the meeting tent where all the people could see it, and they were delivered from it. Now, we know the end of the story. Now, why did I read that about them? Because we might be facing obstacles and giants. David's another one. David ran after the giant. Because he knew that if God is for him, there's nothing, there's no army that, that could defeat him. And why am I I'm sharing these things with us tonight and wrapping this up? Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. He's anointed us to do the things that we're doing. And uh, we live in this world that Satan is the God of this world. And so that's why there's the evil in, in, the, in what we see going on, in hatred and killing and all these vile things that are taking place. But... Uh, where sin abounds, the grace of God does much more abound. And the, Jesus said that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And so there's no reason to fear when things start getting... We, we, he warns us. He shows us how to live. But this is where obedience is going to come into play. We have to be sensitive to his leading and instantly obey what he says to do. Trusting him, which comes down to why we're studying the subject of humility. So I wanted to encourage you tonight. You know, uh, whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever, whatever impossibility seems to be insurmountable, it is something that you can endure and overcome. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that which the enemy has meant for evil and destruction in your life, God is turning around and working it out for your good. And the best is in front of us. So now is not the time to grow weak or get faint or weary, but to hold fast to our confession of faith. Stir ourselves up. Get in the word of God. Look at what the promises are. Speak to your mountain. Speak to your body. Tell your body to get in line, and it will follow suit. But if we walk around saying how much our body's killing us and hurting us, then you can't expect to walk in the blessing and provision of God. Not that God doesn't want to help. He, again, we're not waiting for him to do something. That's where we have to. We're not waiting on God to do something. He took care of it. It's a finished, it's a finished work. It's a Bible fact that we've been healed. We've been redeemed. We've been set free. So the ball is now in our court. We need to endure hardness, stir ourselves up, and keep on pushing forward and enjoying the victory, casting your cares on him, for he cares for us. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet. Glory to God. The Lord is good. I, I, I hope this helped you. It has stirred me up. And, uh, you know, we, we need to surround ourselves with people that speak with the same spirit of faith. Same spirit of faith. People that are not going to cry in your corner and go, oh, man, that is awful. No, someone that's going to grab you and say, hey, Hey, this is what the Word says. I know it's tough. I just went through this, and I'm going through this right now. But we are more than conquerors. We are soldiers that are enduring hardness, and we will overcome because God gave us His Word, and He will never, 
ever lie. Never has, never will, never can. Never can. He's truth. He's truth. And his truth helps us and makes us free. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your provision in our lives. Lord, we thank you that you are the deliverer. You are the rock. You are the foundation. You are for us. And if you're for us, not a thing in this world can be against us. Our hope is in you. Thank you for your holy word. Thank you that your word and your will is good pleasure towards us. That you are our provider. That you have delivered us. You've set us free. You're restoring us, spirit, soul, and body. Our hope is in you, Father. We thank you for, for speaking to us tonight. We thank you for revealing truth to us tonight. And we thank you that as we go from this place, we will not just be hearers, but we will practice these principles and these truths and get results based on your word. Father, we thank you that your word always comes to pass. And we're not looking back. We're not looking to the right or to the left. We're pressing on forward, keeping our eye on the prize, enduring and shouting the victory. We thank you that you are with us. You never leave us nor forsake us. To you be all the glory. To you be all the praise both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for coming out. Uh, I enjoyed sharing the word with you. Uh, if you're in the area again tomorrow morning, we're going to be here at 1030 for our faith and healing class. And then we have our women's meeting tomorrow night at six. So God bless you guys. Keep the switch of faith turned on. Amen.